Welcome and thanks for joining. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Mandrill Pack for Oracle database, part of the VMware vRealize True Visibility Suite. Uh, first of all, I want to take a look at the, some of the documentation before we jump into the dashboards and vRealize operations. Uh, first thing I want to point out is some of the system requirements here. Uh, we do This, this uh, does work on the Enterprise Edition only of vRealize operations. Uh, it does require 11.2 plus uh, or above uh, for Oracle database. And we, we just need a host name, uh, the uh, sitter service name, uh, and then here's some uh, information on the ports. Uh, real quick on the least privileged user, uh, there are some uh, some tables here that we are going to be accessing uh, using this manager pack. Uh, at this point, uh, it, it does not require the Oracle tuning pack, uh, but we do need, uh, we will be accessing these uh, views uh, here. So I was, there's a list of those we'll be accessing. And then to create a user, uh, there is the a uh, kind of a, a script we can use here. Uh, we need to create uh, a user with uh, select uh, the select uh, ability on each of these uh, these tables here or these uh, views. Uh, also, want to call out uh, looking at the using the management pack section uh, as this goes through. Uh, it has a uh, diagrams of the uh, resource types and or resource kinds and the parent-child relationships here. Uh, so we can see we, we make uh, the relationship to the virtual machine uh, from the instance and so on and so forth there. This also does have, uh, it kind of goes through the manager packs uh, that are included here on the, uh, the with the manager pack. Uh, we're going to skip those at the moment since I'll be going those into VRealize operations. Uh, it does go through uh, the views, the reports, uh, the alerts, uh, and also the list of the metrics uh, that come out of the box here. They're going to be uh, with this manager pack that you can get and these are categorized by uh, the object type or the resource kind uh, that it's associated with so we can see there are some for database some for the instance here uh, if we go down there will be some on the queries as well jumping into virilize operations here we can see i have my instance already configured uh, but really we just need to put in a, uh, a name so we can identify that our host information port information uh, whether we're using uh, the sid or the service name here we can put in our credentials, just a username and password there. Uh, and then under, under advanced settings, we can choose a couple different things. Uh, here we're, we're using uh, the SID, uh, so we're using the service ID uh, rather than the service name. So we, we could change that if we wanted to change that to service name instead. Uh, whether we want to uh, enable SSL, uh, our, our query count. So right now we're going we're gonna to gather information. We're going to gather the top 10 queries, and we're going to order that by average time. So we're get we're going to grab the... Uh, top 10 uh, slowest queries in this case. Uh, we could also change that then if we want to order the queries. Uh, we can change it to executions or lapse time total. Uh, so we could change that as well and we would then grab uh, the queries or however many we specify above uh, based on that uh, metric instead. And then whether or not we're going to support the auto discovery for our relationships. Jumping into our dashboards here, I usually like to start uh, most general and kind of work my way down. So I usually like to start with the overview screens. Uh, really, this is just giving us uh, heat maps here uh, based on uh, resource types. And we're going to be uh, sized by different things, colored by different things. We can hover over that and kind of see what it is that we're uh, sizing by, what we're hover or what we're colored by, and then go from there. So we can look at uh, our queries and look and see our executions or the uh, average time it takes to, to execute those queries. Uh, from here, I like to go down and look at the health investigation dashboards. Uh, again, is just kind of showing off a little bit around uh, uh, some high-level metrics on, on uh, what's going on. We can click our alert uh, alerts here, uh, and as we uh, click on our various uh, pieces, the various alerts that are coming up, we can then start to look through at some metrics, uh, our health. Uh, here the parent health our children health and as soon as it loads up we can see our typology as well uh, the various uh, uh, table spaces that we have our instance and our environment as a whole uh, from here I would like to go to the table spaces so we can see we've got our database selector and then we can see uh, all of our table spaces that are part here uh, with same kind of uh, concept we can uh, click or hover over those uh, and find out uh, what we're sized by it looks like uh, allocated space and colored by fre uh, the amount of free space left uh, so we can see it looks like these are a uh, couple of little running out of space over here we can also see if these are permanent temporary uh, and, and kind of the contents of, of each of the table spaces 
Uh, if we look, uh, move down to uh, the queries, uh, we can uh, again see uh, another heat map here. Uh, we can see our, our slowest queries. So we've got our top 10 slowest queries here. We can sort these by executions or by IO wait time. We could, if we expanded this out, we could see our full SQL text over there as well, uh, based on, on uh, these queries that are coming in, these top 10 queries. Uh, or if we uh, choose one of these queries here, if we select one here, uh, it will show up here in the selected query, and we could also expand and see our SQL text as well. Now this is, right now it just changed at, at this point, is just by average execution time. It's not sized by anything. We could size that by executions, uh, or get just the executions if we wanted to change that on the query selector as well. Uh, from here we can look at the uh, Oracle VMs or Oracle hosted on the VMs so we can see our, our instance and then the related virtual machine here as well so we can start to look at the uh, KPIs on, on the uh, virtual machine as well and if we wanted the last one is just done if we had our, our service discovery turned on we could then find out the uh, the OS and get our OS information as well uh, from the service discovery from Virilis operations. So once we've added multiple manager packs into our cluster, we can move from a view like this, looking at our VM data store and host, to something more like this. We can see that the same virtual machine is still the focal point, but off of the data store we can now see the three-part virtual volume and the common provisioning group it's a part of. We can see the SQL Server instance, we can see the databases within that instance, all of the queries, the SQL jobs, and the wait types. We can also see the Cisco Nexus switch, as well as the ports that are on that switch. We can take a look at our F5 Big IP load balancer. We can look at our IIS web server, application pools, websites, applications, and virtual directories. On the left side of our virtual machine, we can see not only the host, but the Cisco ECS blade, the fabric interconnects, and even the chassis itself. Once we have dashboards that can help us with the relationships within our stack, we can start to build out some custom dashboards that can help out with troubleshooting or allow us to be more proactive in our approach. We can correlate our data and use this information to visualize the stack from applications down through the compute layer, the networking layer, and down into the physical storage we're utilizing.